Blog Talk Radio. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's that time again, and boy, he brings the artillery to this show. It's a True North podcast hosted by a brother, a mentor, and a friend to me, Billy North. Out there in Seattle, Washington, yours truly, Mark Mancini, playing a little co-host, producing out here in Los Angeles, where it kind of felt like where Billy lives up there in Seattle the last two weeks with the dreary rain and everything. But that's a story for another day, 347-205-9631. If you happen to miss this show, catch the archive version, blogtalkradio.com forward slash Mancini Sports Podcast Platforms, wherever you subscribe to podcast powered now by Mancini Media. So without further ado, let me lay the red carpet down, put that podium in its place, hand off the mic. First of all, Bill, the threes. How are you? How can people get a hold of you? And boy, you're bringing another Hall of Famer to this great uh, show, my friend. Oh, I enjoy it. I'm good, relatively good. You know, I had the flu last week. Sorry I missed you guys. Uh, you can reach me at Bill Norte. B I L L N O R T E one five at gmail dot com. Hit me up there. And other than that, life is good. Uh, yeah, you're, you're bringing a, a Ferguson Jenkins through here, three time All Star, National League Cy Young Award winner, two time wins leader, National League strikeout leader. They retired his number in Chicago. He's in the Cubs Hall of Fame and the Texas Rangers Hall of Fame. So you take the first few questions, and I'll throw some in there in between, my good friend. I just want to introduce my friend, Ferguson Jenkins. He, when I came up to the big leagues, he was my teammate. I had four teammates that are in the Hall of Fame, or should be, uh, that played collectively over 80 years. Ferguson Jenkins. Billy Williams, Ernie Banks, and Ron Sano. And what a way to break in. How you doing, Ferg? I'm doing fine, Billy. Yeah. Doing good. Yeah. What you been up to? I just home. I just came home just the other day from the cover convention. Uh, they started last Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, having uh, ex-Cubs come in and uh, uh, do this cover convention. The, the new owner, Tom Ricketts, he hadn't had it in the last two years because of the COVID situation. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we were there at the Sheraton Hotel with Billy and uh, a bunch of guys. Randy Hunley showed up. But there were some older guys plus younger guys, too. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you, how did you get to hockey? But that was the sport up there in Canada, huh? That was my first sport, Bill. I started yeah. skating when I was four years old. Dad got me skates. And I played as high as junior at the age of 17. And until the scouts wanted to know uh, if I wanted to sign a professional to play baseball, I'd have to cut out hockey, which I did. So, but uh, it was a, it was kind of my first sport that, that I really liked playing. Yeah, and, and it's Canadian, uh, it's that Canada sport, so that's good. Uh, one thing I'm looking at these stats. You had 510 decisions. <laughs> that's a lot of starts. <laughs> yeah, I had a good arm. I had a good arm, Bill. You know, I did. I never had a sore arm. Never missed a start uh, over the. I think over the uh, seven, eight years of the Cubs, uh, I averaged about thirty-five starts a year. Yeah, I know, and and but that was when, and you would get us in and out real good. You know, I'm talking about hour forty-five. We're we're off the field, you know, and and it was wonderful and. You like the other guy in in uh, the other league, Catfish Hunter. These two guys could put the most comfortable low for four on your butt that you ever want to see. <laughs> Damn, I just missed it. <laughs> yeah. that, that was the fun part of pitching when you make a good pitch and a lot of times a hitter just misses it, hits a ground ball, hits a pop-up to infield, outfield. But uh, that's what our job was, to go out there and, and pitch uh, and throw strikes. Uh, we're not out there to make the hitters look bad, but, uh, you know, because of the fact that I have eight guys playing behind me, so the defense is going to come into play a lot of different times. But getting the ball, being quick, being decisive, knowing what you want to throw, and trying to stay ahead, in the, uh, especially in the pitcher's count, and make the hitter do the work. 
and, wow. and get them in and out. And, but the complete games back in those days, in 71, you had 39 starts and completed 30 games and wow. won 25 of them. <laughs> yeah, that was that was fun. That was fun. I yeah. And three hundred innings wasn't anything back in them days. <laughs> no, no, that was something that because uh, you're they had a four man rotation, and Leo Drocher was the kind of manager that if he thought you were in control of the game, you stayed out there and you pitched. And uh, to, to this day, I, I'm probably thankful that uh, that situation was always brought up. He would come by me and like in the seventh inning and say. Hey, big fellow, we're giving the bullpen a rest tonight. Man, that was confidence factor. Isn't that something? Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, hey, I remember him. Mark, oh, sorry. Mark Mancini here. Um, wanted to throw the, 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 the unique question. Uh, you were a 20-game winner for seven seasons with the clubs, including six consecutive seasons. To, to win 20 today, I mean, what you accomplish is amazing today. It, it would almost be very unique to hit that because you haven't seen that hit on a consistent basis like you put it up there. Any thoughts to that? Well, the biggest thing is I, I was healthy starting every fourth game and uh, not missing starts and just having them, I think, the, uh, the tolerance to tell my body that I'm in great shape, which I which I try to stay, stay in great shape and had a good arm, that – my job was to go out there and pitch. And uh, in the National League, I enjoyed that because I had a chance to hit. And then when I got traded to the American League, they had the DH. But still, I knew that what, what my job was all about, even though uh, there was a, a few times in, in the American League with, with Boston and Texas, I might only throw seven innings, and then they put uh, a relief pitcher out there. But I didn't mind that. So I enjoyed the pitching part of it. That, that was my job. And it was good. Any any thought to the American League compared to the National League? I've always looked at the American League where more or less the big boppers and the National League was more of a finesse league. Has anything changed from that, or or is it just – it might be the other way around. You played in both leagues. Yeah. Any difference between the two-to-one, three-to-one kind of games in the National League compared to the eight, nine, eight games in the American League? I always thought that the National League was a fastball hitting a ball club uh, or a fastball league. Uh, in the American League, it was a breaking ball league. Uh, getting ahead of the hitter, similar, both leagues, as, as a pitcher, that's what you strive to do, get ahead of the hitter. But as a DH, I didn't go to the plate. So when I was with the Texas Rangers, I had Alex Johnson or I had uh, Jeff Burroughs. When I went to the, uh, the American League with, with the Boston Red Sox, I had Jim Rice, which was a pretty good hitter. So <laughs> I was satisfied with these guys going to the plate and, and, and hitting in my in my position. Either they they didn't hit ninth, but they hit different spots in the lineup. Uh-huh. And I always thought too that the National League was a, a, a fastball league, and and pitcher if you go two three and one, then you're going to get a fastball, and and then went to the American League, and then they started tricking. You know, and 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 the National League was much more aggressive league, I think, as far as it, uh, the offenses and and because we used to run over there, but in the when it came to the American League, it slowed down. You know, they didn't steal bases and they weren't as aggressive. I I, I think you're right, Bill. I I know that uh, two and two, three and two, a lot of times you're going to see a fastball. Uh, the American League, maybe you might see a slider or you might see an off-speed uh, changeup, but uh, I always thought that uh, the guys that I faced uh, in in the National League, like Gibson and Marichal, Perry, Drysdale, Seaver, Carlton, these guys came right at the hitter, two and two, three and two. And in the American League, a little somewhat different. They might throw that breaking ball a little more. Jim Palmer, Quaya, uh, so many different guys at uh, uh, Fidrich or maybe the plane. You might not see a good fastball in that situation. Yeah, yeah. What was the deal uh, on home runs? Well, that that a lot of times uh, was kind of my demise when they always thought I gave up too many home runs because I challenged the hitter two and two, three and two, and I might give up that solo home run. I know one year I gave up 
40 some home runs, 26 were solo. Yeah. And <laughs> so I, I came remember, right at guys. Yeah. That's why I asked about that because it's, yeah, hey, man. And Lil Zai swinging too hard. You didn't like that very much either. <laughs> no, I would change speeds from time to time. Guys that were free swingers like Clemente, Cepeda, you know, uh, Lee May with Cincinnati. There, there was Dick Allen. There were a lot of guys that went up to the plate, and they weren't they weren't bashful. Oh, they were out there swinging. They went after it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was aggressive league. Who's the best hitter you think you ever saw? Well, two of them. Uh, I think Roberto Clemente uh, with Pittsburgh and Hank Aaron with, with Atlanta and with uh, Milwaukee were, to me, some of the dangerous hitters that I faced. There was a few other guys. But Covey was dangerous, Dick Allen, Mays. Uh, there were guys that, you know, you had to be real careful and, and, and be smart to not leave pitches out over the plate uh, because uh, they know what the heck was, what, what that bat was all about. Yeah, and I got to come up in the year uh, 72, and that was the year Clemente had that MVP year. And what a hitter uh, and a player. I remember him. There were some guys over there that could really hit. Uh, In the American League, it was a a different thing. We had big hitters, but, you know, it, it was, and the stats indicated that. You guys, and we had you and and Gibson and Carlton that would come in, and they get you in and out in in a complete game in an hour and a half, hour to two hours. And how did you do that? Now I think that get the ball, get the sign, and pitch. Don't beat around the bush. Stay ahead of the hitter. The American League was similar. You know, Jim Palmer was a similar type uh, pitcher. Uh, uh, Mark Fidrich. There was a, a lot of guys. McLean, uh, Lolich with the Tigers that just went right after you and let you know what the game was all about. And I think that's pretty sharp. You know, you being with Oakland, you got you had three or four pitchers. You had Vita Blue that went right after people, Catfish, Kenny Holston, Blue and Odom. I mean, they didn't mess around when they got the ball. And I think that's what pitching was all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. And, and over, you talk about uh, pitching the contact, but you struck out over 3,000 hitters. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the nice part of the game. You know, you don't get 15, 20 strikeouts a game. You can maybe get eight or nine in certain situations. And I pitched a lot of innings. I think uh, something like 4,500 innings. In my 18 or almost 19 year career, and I averaged uh, at least six or seven strikeouts a game, which is nice. Yeah, but did there, was it on that changeup or did you guess it? Well, no, I, I had a good slider, but that off speed pitch, uh, a lot of times that changeup really helped me two and two, three and two, because the hitters are, are real aggressive. So throwing that off speed pitch, guys are out in front of it, and it proved to, to be a great pitch for me. Mm-hmm. Are you going to be in Arizona this year? I'm going to do some work with the Cubs. Yeah, I'm going to probably uh, be there in uh, in Mesa at uh, Sloan Field working with some of the younger pitchers. Oh, yeah. You I know, Ferguson, I wanted to they talk about the guy you picked up on Chicago. I know he's a hitter there, and I, I'm, I'm throwing my hat in the ring right now. I'm calling him the National League MVP. Kind of hard in that division being a Pittsburgh Pirate guy. But um, I think Cody Bellinger is, is – is, they're going to straighten out that kid's swing, and I think you've got to get your hard hats ready in, in, in the bleachers there. This guy's going to launch some shots. I think he's going to be the MVP of the league. Any thoughts of the guy you picked up from the Dodgers? I think Cody's a, a definite uh, individual that could put some big numbers up. I know he's young still. I think that uh, he's an aggressive hitter. You know, he was, was getting himself out a lot of times swinging at offbeat pitches. And uh, being healthy, I think that that's going to definitely help him. I think, he, I think he was on the DL a couple of times last season. But uh, he knows how to play. He's a, a proven winner. And as you said, I think that uh, if he could put together about over 600 at-bats and maybe hit third or fourth in the lineup, he might definitely be a candidate for MVP. Yeah. 
I think that the, the good thing about him is he needs, uh, I mean, a, a benefit to him would, need, would be him getting out of his own head and seeing the ball and hitting the ball, you know, it's, uh, because he's changed his swing a number of times. And, uh, you know, I think that that's a problem, too. I think you know, he's always been a National League hitter, so he knows a lot of the pitchers that are in the league. Uh, and it depends on where he's in the lineup being protected. The guy in front of him or the guy behind him uh, gets certain pitches. So he understands what the game's all about. But I think he he could definitely get 25-plus home runs and maybe 100 RBIs. And he's got to stay healthy. Play in center field and Wrigley Field, as you know, Bill, you can't run into that wall. It's behind those vines, but bricks. Excuse me. That ain't no joke. <laughs> we, had, we had plywood in Oakland, and that could straighten you up real good, but that them bricks behind that ivy out there will really straighten you up. Yeah, yeah you can't afford to make mistakes, because the warning track is like two straight and you're into the wall or into the, into the vines. But, yeah. you know, I think all ballparks are about the same. You get about two good strides, uh, and then you got to watch out for the fence. And, and in Wrigley, you can't do- jump and, and make some sensational catches like you do in some of the other ballparks because they've got that netting out there, uh, yeah. out there in the, in the outfield, left center, right center. Uh, and that was a good well, you know, Fergie, about- you brought up a. a oh, I'm sorry. You, you brought up a guy uh, by the name of Mark Fidrich, and boy, did he transform <laughs> baseball in Detroit in, in 76. Um, you were with the Red Sox. Take us through that because that was just simply remarkable. I remember that. Uh, in the, with, You know, it's the 70s in baseball to me was mustaches, crazy uniforms, and personalities. But, boy, Mark Fidrich was something to transform what he did in Detroit, and I think we lost him at an early age. Yeah, I uh, got a chance to to face him in, in spring training when I was in the American League uh, with with Boston. Uh, he's pitching there right there in Lakeland, and he was kind of a quirky type individual. People didn't under, really understand him, but he understood what he was trying to accomplish. He was out there to pitch, out there to win ball games, and if he patted the third baseman on the back for making a great play or running over to the shortstop and shaking his hand, you know that was just Mark Fidrich, and he always like to to do a little act on the mound, and he didn't take away. I think the fan from seeing that he would rush the rush the, the mound off or walk around the mound and do certain things. But he was a definite winner. I think that first year, rookie year, he won nineteen ball games. I'll and then tell you he, this about him: he was a competitor. I definitely, definitely. And he threw a fastball that swiggled up there, a good fastball. And it was always between your ankles and your knee. And he would come at you. I didn't look at all of that other stuff, but he was a competitor. And I, he, he come to fight. He come to fight now. Definitely. You know, I hit him in a great National League pitcher because he was down in the strike zone most of the time. So he knew what he tried to accomplish uh, on the on day his assignment was to go out there and pitch. He yeah. definitely was a, a competitor. Yeah, yeah. You had another guy, the left-hander in Boston, Bill Lee. He yeah, was a little quirky too. Bill, Bill just <laughs> Bill was his nickname was Spaceman, and he, he, people didn't really understand him, but he knew how to pitch too. He was a guy that went right after you. But quite a few years, he was always sixteen, seventeen wins, so he knew what his job was to do over there in the American League, especially with Boston. They had some great hitters, but he always had that little anecdote that he he would say to reporters, he would say to somebody after a ball game, or he he didn't like Greg Nelson, he didn't like Reggie Jackson, didn't like uh, he didn't like Mickey Rivers. So he would always say something about uh, those left-handed hitters, and he was a left-hander himself, and getting them out about what they could hit, and what they couldn't hit. Yeah, but and uh, compared to the two, but he pitched. Left-hander in that ballpark is a tough park to pitch in, but he he used that wall, you know, with that with the guys that he was facing. They knew it was there, and they were trying to do stuff. He pitched against what they were trying to do by all them all his pitches kind of faded away from you, 
and then he stayed off to play the inside. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he had a good fastball, and he had a blooper pitch that he used from time to time. But he had a good breaking ball. He had a pretty good slider, too. But he was an individual that knew how to pitch, and I think that's, in, in his case, I think that was a, a definite plus for him. He knew what he, he was trying to accomplish every time he was out there on the hill. Well, what about my idol, uh, Willie Stargell? Did he ever get the best of you? And uh, boy, I'll tell you one thing: I, I will have to wait till I get up to heaven to interview that guy. But unbelievable to see Pops do what he did in Pittsburgh. And what's your thoughts on Pops, uh, Fergie? Uh, outstanding left-hand hitter, uh, especially there in Ford Field, and and I pitched against him in Wrigley. He very dangerous hitter. Uh, there was like four or five guys in that lineup: Sengian, Stargell, Clemente. Uh, I'm trying to think of the, the third baseman was uh, 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 Richie Hebner Robinson. too. Bob Robinson. Uh, ha- ha- Richie Hebner. Yeah, Bill Hebner Manlock. was a good hitter, and they had Richie Zisk in the outfield too. So they, yeah. they had a good hitting lineup. Pittsburgh they were called the Lumber Company for years yeah. and years and years. And when they when they put guys in the lineup, they weren't taken when they come to the plate. Well, they had, they had uh, Al Oliver too. He let off a couple of years there. So they had a ball club that would score runs. You had to be real careful giving up runs to keep your ERA down so that your team had a, an opportunity to possibly win a ball game. Yeah. Uh, I remember I came up in 72, uh, well, 71, and Stendhal had come up that year, too. And and they had Dave Cash and they had uh, uh, Vic Davalio. I mean, just a bunch of them over there. Matt Matty Alou. I mean, they had some guys that knew how to make contact. They, they they didn't strike out a lot. They they put the ball in play, and definite power hitters with Richie Zisk and uh, Roberts, and also uh, with Clemente and, and and Willie McCovey. So if you made a mistake, well, certain guys have been on base, scores two or three or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and they would get off, and 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 they could slash. They were slashers. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah. And, Definitely hard on uh, uh, control pitchers. Yeah, I, I think that that was a, the biggest thing. He couldn't throw a lot of strikes because they, they were a bad ball hitting ball club from time to time. So not throwing a lot of strikes was was going to help you uh, to try to to keep even out the score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you there, Fergie? And not to not to throw you know dirt on this. When Rennie Stennett set the record going seven for seven, I think he did against the Cubs. But were you in Chicago at the time? Still a major uh, league I, record. I might have been there. I, I know that uh, yeah. he, he did set that record. Kessinger had it before yeah. for six for six. Right. And Rennie, Rennie went, uh, like you say, seven for seven. Yeah. Yeah. Now, any plans for hockey? Because that's my best sport. I've always loved hockey and Love my Penguins, but any thought of skating for the Toronto Maple Leafs, man? Because I know you like hockey, <laughs> and you're Canadian. <laughs> hey, yeah. Gordy, how came know, back? Uh, no, I don't think that's going to happen. You know, my agent yeah. that I had in Montreal, Larry, two agents, Larry Sazen and David Chatier, they had clients that were with the St. Louis Blues. And in 1968, uh, they were going to St. Louis, and I, I, I joined them because I was going to – negotiated contract with the Cubs, and the guys wanted to know, hey, Kurt, put some blades on and skate around. So I, that's what I did. I skated around, uh, oh, maybe 15, 20 minutes, shoot the puck at the goalie. And uh, when I was done, the general manager gave me a contract with the Blues. <laughs> wow. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed hockey. Uh, hockey, as I said, was my first sport. Yeah, and then the uh, Globetrotters, how did you get in that? Well, yeah. Joe Zavino was the marketing individual with the Globetrotters, and their head office was on Michigan Avenue. He wanted to know if I was going back to Canada, would I like to play maybe 15, 20 games with him? And being the pitcher each night, they gave up the home run in the baseball skit to Metal Art Clement. And it went across so successful, they extended it right into Michigan, Ohio, Indiana. That first year, probably 40 games. Uh, I started in October and would was finished maybe in sometime in January and then go to spring training. Over the course of those three seasons, off seasons, uh, 67, 8, 9, probably 180-plus games with them, which was a lot of fun to do. 
was Gibbs, did Gibson play for them too? He, he did in 1964, 64 with him. And I think he might have been uh, similar with, with the skit playing against Metal Ark. Uh, there, there's been a bunch of Hall of Famers. Uh, uh, Ernie Banks dressed with him. So did, uh, I think, uh, Lou Bronx. Oh, let me see. Who else? Satchel Page. But I wow. didn't play. But Gibby and I were the two that played. Yeah. Played games with them. Yeah. Against the. Hey, Fergie, who was your mentor? The Washington team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who Who was your mentor growing up? And uh, we're down the last four minutes of it. And boy, we could talk for hours, Bill and I, with you. But your mentor growing up, and uh, why was he your mentor? Well, my dad. My dad played in the Negro League in, in the 30s. Out of Chatham with the Chatham Colored All Stars. He, he wanted me to to get into sports, and if he thought that uh, that's the occupation I wanted to participate, he backed me wholeheartedly. And then I got signed by the Philly scout, Gene DeJura, who uh, was kind of my mentor, me uh, under his wing. And I always wanted to be a first baseman. I always wanted to hit. But he proved to me that pitching was (laughs) the best position for me. I would say. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? I grew up with, you know, uh, watching it for 60 years now, uh, 61 to be exact. I've always said pitching's 90% of the game till I heard a guy tell me, not really, it's about 50. And I said, I don't know what book you read, but good pitching stops good hitting. <laughs> Any thoughts of pitching? Um, and you pitched for all these years, 18 to be exact. I mean, any thought to pitching being 90% of the game? Oh, I mean, if you go out there – you can't go out there 85% and try to win a ball game. I think you got to be 95 plus uh, and be healthy because you're trying to accomplish something. You use so much of your body, and then you got to think on a constant basis, pitch to pitch, hitter to hitter, inning to inning, to try to win a ball game. So it takes a lot of strength, both mental and physical, to win a ball game. Great yeah. takes. Bill, anything anything to follow up with two minutes and some change, my friend, with one of the best uh, in the business. I, like to I talk call about Mr. Cook. I just know this much is that Fergie was a mentor to me and Billy Williams, and both of them kind of helped me get acclimated in the league, and, and I appreciate it so much. And uh, Next week we'll probably have Billy Williams, but it's the kind of thing that I had some great mentors when I came in, and this is one of them. And and he took care of me and, and kept me out of trouble pretty much. And, and I just thank him for being being in my life. And he's one of those guys that you, you used to watch and then you got to play with. And, and what a wonderful time. Had a good life with you, sir, and, and, and I appreciate you. Well, I appreciate that. You know, when you come up to the big yeah. leagues, uh, I think there's always a mentor that, they always put uh, a rookie with a veteran. I was with Ernie Banks. Uh, I had George Altman for a little bit. But uh, I just think that when I, when I went to the Rangers, I became a mentor with Jim Bibby. Bibby was a couple of years younger than me. We worked out. He was a, a pitcher, a roommate. And we were talking about pitching from time to time. And then when I was at Boston, I had Dwight Evans, an outfielder. And then back again with the, with the Rangers, uh, I had another couple of young pitchers. You know, I, I had Ray Burris for a while. With the Cubs, yeah. you know, I think the game uh, should evolve with rookies and veterans uh, playing with and against each other, and I think that does help the ball club. <laughs> More people you hear about, if the clubhouse is happy and satisfied, accomplishing accomplishing things, a happy clubhouse keeps guys uh, on their toes. You want to win yeah. for each other, and I think that's. Part of what the game's all about. Yeah, I think a lot of As that has to do with that thing. I think a lot of that has to do with that thing called winning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, winning. Winning always satisfies <laughs> almost everything. Anything that uh, that happens uh, in, in, in any game, basketball, football, yeah. baseball, hockey. If you've got a winning attitude and you and you portray it and and display it in the clubhouse and then use it. Uh, out on the field or on the ice uh, ice hockey rink or on the basketball court, that's a definite plus. Yep. 
Yeah, somebody in Ontario, Charles, is basically saying maybe Fergie can help my Anaheim Mighty Ducks out uh, for the second half so we can get in the playoffs. Yeah, we'll get we'll, we'll definitely help you on that one, uh, Charles. Uh, hey, Billy, as we wrap this up, uh, gosh, we could like I said, we can go on and on, and I know there's a lot of listeners and everything. Let everybody know uh, how they can get a hold of you, Billy, and next week uh, another cup coming through here. So we're – we got the Windy City coming yeah. through. Yeah, yeah. Get my guys. Uh, you can reach me at on uh, Gmail at Bill Norte, N O R B I L L N O R T E one five at Gmail dot com. And I want to thank Fergie and and uh, appreciate him spending some time with us. And we'd like to have him back and. Thank you, Mark, for being a good co-host, and what a good show. Thank you. All right. Yeah, my thanks pleasure, to both guys. of you guys. You, you know, know I love you about both. The of baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, sure. I love you both. It's just I, I have a problem when the Pirates play the Cubs, so you can you can understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. For, for the Hall of Famer, Fergie Jenkins, the 72 speedster out there, the world champion himself, Billy Nort. Here's truly Mark Mancini. Catch the archive on blogtalkradio.com forward slash Mancini Sports. Next week, Billy Williams. Till then, have a blessed night, and thank you so much for listening. Stay safe, everybody.